look at this. Look how good these two have been this season. Top rankings in all of those categories. Well, here we are, as I said, on the roof of the Marriott in Marina Del Rey. Thanks for joining us. I'm Sherry Burris here alongside Brady Quinn and Wizard of Odds, Kenny White. We know Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow, both top quarterbacks in this league. Brady, what do you think, though, is Stafford's biggest weakness as he approaches the biggest game of his career? Well, look, he doesn't have many. You know, I think one of the things that stands out, though, especially if you're watching the course of the regular season, was turnovers. You know, when you've got the type of arm talent he has, you have the propensity to sometimes force the football or get a little overconfident throwing into certain windows. And we saw an example of that in the NFC Championship game. And look, there haven't been many this postseason, but this ball should have been picked off. Whiskey Tart drops what was an absolute layup for an interception, up by three at this point, dramatically could have changed the outcome of the game. Maybe we're talking about the 49ers being here mm -hmm. instead of the Rams. But, you know, that's really the only thing when you look at Matt Stafford's game that you see him do from time to time is force the football into windows that either he's trying to get the ball to Cooper Cup, Odell Beckham, Van Jefferson downfield, and get a little overconfident in that arm strength sometimes. Kenny, what's a prop that you like for Matthew Stafford that you think will hit under? Well, you know, a lot of people don't like under props, but uh, I've, I'm under on most of the Matthew Stafford props. Got the pressure. This is a big game. And these defenses are good. Uh, and, and in my model, the Cincinnati Bengals have allowed only 18 points per median on the road this year. That's it, 18. And they only allowed one touchdown pass. So I'm going to go under one and a half touchdown passes with Matthew Stafford. Now, if you throw two a game, Brady, it's that's 34 touchdown passes. Right. That's a pretty good year. Yeah. So, I mean, to be consistent like that's a Super Bowl, and it's a big price, plus 170. I wouldn't be taking it if it wasn't this high. It was 180, and it has come down. So there is professional money under one and a half. And I like the under and yards for it. So I'm kind of sticking yeah. with that trend. We've seen them want to run the football more, get Cam Akers involved uh, in this offense, really utilize the outside zone running scheme, take pressure off Matt Stafford's shoulders. So I like the under of 279 and a half yards for Matt Stafford in this one. I think he'll be good. I think he'll be efficient. But I do think he'll be under that number. It's incredible to think what Matt Stafford has been able to do just one year here in L.A., what do you think is his greatest strength that, that's got them to this point? Well, it's his arm talent. I mean, you hear that all the time. What does that mean? A, a few things. One, you have to have the sort of velocity that he has where he can make all sorts of throws because of his arm strength. But he does it not necessarily having to have his platform set. He articulates his arm to whatever angle he needs to. And then this is the other thing is, we talk about arm strength. Look at this. The anticipation, the throw in a spot where the corner can't get deep enough to get it, the safety can't make it in time, in a perfect spot to Cooper Cup in the NFC Championship game to help them come back and ultimately win the football game. This is just the sort of thing you're talking about where if you notice his feet, he didn't have to fully turn them and address them to his throw. He's got that sort of ability with his upper half, in particular his arm, to still make those throws and not have to have his body squirt up to the throw. That's where you can catch a defense off guard. Or sometimes when the rush is getting to you, you're able to make throws other quarterbacks can't because you have the upper body strength. And Kenny, what about you? A prop that you think will go over for Matthew Stafford? Yeah, you know, one, this is one of my favorite props of, of, the, of the game. And Matthew Stafford is a long career, wanting to be here. He's finally here, gets to the right team, gets to the Super Bowl. Uh, he's done everything he can to get his team here. He's had 15 rushing attempts in his three playoff games. The over and under is two and a half rushing attempts. <laughs> I love this pick. Uh, <laughs> and and we, we have, if we have a kneel down, and I think the Rams are going to win the game, he could have three kneel downs to close a game out. That would get over the total. But he's going to leave the pocket to get a first down and keep a drive going. He's going to do it. This guy's a very smart quarterback. and He'll definitely get a couple of first downs on rushes and at least one or two kneel downs. You know, it, it's funny you say that because I was looking at some of these prop bets, and this was one of them, whether it's the rushing yards for the quarterbacks or rushing attempts either way you know to your point about all this it's not like you're saving yourself for next week or late in the mm -hmm. season you know, there's this this quote right live to play another down not now it's the oh. super bowl baby you're letting it all hang out you get that open run you're going to take off and go and and if they do win obviously there will be a couple kneel downs potentially uh, i like the over and touchdown passes i know we differ on this one but i think in part because we know what the mo of the rams have been since they got into the postseason so i think they're going to have to throw their way into the end zone and if you know if you're looking for a favorable matchup i think it's odell beckham on either one of the cornerbacks uh, for the cincinnati Bengals on the outside I think that's going to be the target when they're isolated down in the, the red zone, especially if Tyler Higbee doesn't play. Mm -hmm. That might even force more targets to Odell Beckham. So I think the over of one and a half touchdown passes to me is, is what I'm looking at for this game. Well, Joe Burrow, Joey franchise out here in his first Super Bowl in only his second season 
in the league. Again, a guy doing a lot of things right. We're going to get to that. But first, his biggest weakness, you think, is what, Brady? Doesn't have any. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I mean, when you watch his game, he doesn't have any. He can make all the throws. He's got all the skills, the intangibles. He's athletic enough to maneuver the pocket. Really, his biggest weakness is what's around him and how that's going to impact his play. We saw that in the divisional round versus the Tennessee Titans, having been sacked nine times. I mean, that's a product of his offensive line. So, you know, for me, it's it's really how does he overcome that? And we haven't seen quarterbacks get sacked as much as he's gotten in the postseason and still find a way of winning football games. Now, it helps in that game when the Titans turn the football over three times uh, if you get sacked nine times like that and still be able to win. But the reality is, you know, protection is going to be a premium versus this front, with, which is with as good as Von Miller's been playing, Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, on all those cats up front, with, which are mismatches on this offensive line. An under prop you like to hit for Joe Burrow is? I'm going under in his passing yards. And I, and I think, again, with that pass rush, he's got to be quick. Yeah. Got to get the ball out quick, short passing game. Uh, they're not going to let him, the Rams are not going to let him get over the top. We know that they're going to be playing deep safeties. And his numbers prove it out uh, on the road this year. Again, they've been a very conservative football team. His median passing yards per game is 250 on the road. And that's against a 20th-ranked defense, average 20th rank. Now he's playing the fifth-best pass defense in the NFL, who only allows 210 passing yards a game at home. And we're looking at a number, what, 275 and a half? So yeah. I'm, I'm under with Joe Burrow. Yeah, so in, in this case, I think there, there's definitely a play in there. It really depends on how the game flow goes. You know, if they get down early, do they get away from it? Just have to throw the football to get their way back into it. Um, for me with Burrow, I, I like the under interceptions, and in part because – He's been a good decision maker throughout the course of the season, really his entire career, you go back to college. But one of the things in this game is I think we've seen him at times be more apt to take a sack as opposed to forcing the football or take off and run as opposed to forcing the football in the coverage. So I like the under on that half interception, that particular bet. I just think he does a good job of kind of managing the game preserving their right to punt, playing the field position battle, and not forcing the football and giving momentum back to a Rams team that, as you just discussed, is playing at home. So he has no weaknesses, so only strength. I personally think it's the confidence and the swag uh, that Joe Burrow brings. I can't wait to see what his arrival outfit's going to look like. But then, Brady, on the football field, what is his biggest strength? Well, everyone talks about his poise, but I think that poise comes from his ability to understand. He knows how to navigate the pocket. So even when there's chaos all out around him, he stays cool, calm in the pocket. He's able to keep his eyes downfield to be able to make big plays to his receivers, to his weapons there. And, and that's just something that, you know, a lot of guys do it, but he does it in a, ma- a manner in which he's able to get up into the pocket. He's not going to run around all day and take a bad sack or cut off half the field. He keeps everything alive. He keeps two hands on the football. It takes good ball security. You know, here's an example of it, too, as he finds Jamar Chase uncovering downfield. And, again, these are all the fundamental things. Like, if you're cutting up a tape, of what to have your young quarterback to do, just watch Joe Burrow. Feels the pressure, still has two hands on the pocket. As he gets through it, still keeps his eyes downfield, delivers a strike. And that's the kind of stuff that you rep and you train and you do all the time, and you see it come to live on tape. All right, let's talk now about a prop for over, an over prop you like to hit for Joe Burrow. Okay, you now um, I went opposite of Brady here on this in interceptions, and hear me out. It's Jared Goff three years ago, his numbers were as good as Joe Burrow's. And if he has a weakness, and I know Brady's no weaknesses, but the one weakness would be who's around him and his offensive lines is weakness. Yep. He's going to get pressured in this game. So when you're pressured, you got to make throws that you may not want to make at times, and as well as the inexperience. He doesn't have the experience. Goff didn't have the experience, had a tremendous year that year for the Rams, but he got to the Super Bowl. No touchdown passes, one interception against the Patriot defense. Um, I think the Rams get at least one interception. So we're kind of opposite on a couple here, but, hey, that's sports betting. If, yeah, if we weren't going to be opposite, it would be no fun <laughs> if it was yeah. a love festival. Yeah. Time. That's how it is. Uh, and so for, for me with Joe Burrow, I like the over one and a half touchdown passes. Again, I think this is going to be a game that's going to be led largely by their quarterbacks. When you look schematically, too, at what the Rams like to do up front, they give you a lot of what's called five man fronts, solid, bare. They're all synonymous terms with one another. What that means, though, is you're getting basically a front that's going to force you or dictate you to get out of some run plays and throw the football because you're going to see a little more post eye safety. You're going to see some looks where you've got the ability to throw the football and you're running against a numbers count that it's not to your advantage. So I think you're going to see that a decent amount from, from the Los Angeles Rams. I think the other thing you're going to see is they're going to have to make some plays in the pass game to the outside, whether it's T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, or Jamar Chase. 
that's how they're going to have to get in the end zone. It's been tough for teams to do that versus the Rams, but I think in order to win this game, and I do think the Bengals are going to win, they have to do it. So I got the over of one-half touchdown passes for Joe Burrow. All right, well, lock in your picks as we get closer to kickoff, guys. Thanks for the time. And don't go anywhere. Much more coming up. And if you want more expert picks as we get set for the biggest game in the NFL season, make sure you download and subscribe to the Early Edge podcast. Our Jonathan Coachman, the host, and it's daily picks in under 10 minutes. It's available every morning by 11 a.m. Eastern. Download, subscribe, follow. You know the deal. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.